Hello and welcome to Exworthy. Ever since I relayed the point work at the west end of the station, shunting the yard has become smoother and more reliable. There are actually five places to set out wagons at Exworthy, well actually six, besides the good shed and the cattle dock and Mitchell's Coal and Coke area over here and Chaswell's feed shore here, there is a crane for lifting off items off flat wagons or open wagons. But beside all this there is also the refuge siding on the downside which is probably off camera to your left. At the moment it's all quiet at Exworthy. There's still an empty wagon at Mitchell's Coal and Coke and there is a full break in the bay which brought the newspapers down this morning and is waiting to go back up to London on the evening train. It may be quiet now but the down goods is on its way bringing wagons for each of these spots. Those of you who've watched my previous video will see that I've installed magnetic uncouplers in each of the three platform tracks. And that works well for dividing passenger trains, but goods trains need to be uncoupled in all sorts of places. So that's where I've tried to come up with the hand uncoupler using some of these tiny little magnets that are now available. So here is the Mark I with a couple of these magnets affixed to a piece of paper clip. However, it takes a bit of practice to get this to work. The trick is to use these fingers to hold the wagons on the track and move them out of the way of the magnet once they're uncoupled. It has a bit of a learning curve as you shall see. Setting out the clay wagons allows me to practice with my uncoupler.
The platform track uncoupler disguised in the foot crossing is just in the right place for splitting the train. The shunter on the platform is strategically placed so I can see where the uncoupler is from the control side. The signaller pulls off the junction signal to allow the driver to take the wagons across to the upside and reverse into the goods yard. The three vans are set out first. The driver takes the remaining wagons into the head shunt and there's time for a brew. Of tea, that is. In the meantime, the up local is on the block from Treverin Porth. In somewhat typical fashion, it's formed today of one and a half class 108 units. Well, I think that DCC sound for model railways is the greatest invention since the wheelie bin. Not only does it save me having to add sound later, but the way you drive these trains is much more like the real thing now than without the sound. You can't just turn it on and go. You have to wait for the engine to start, rev up, get into gear, and then away you go.
Now the tea has been finished, the driver of the goods must pull out the empty wagon from the coal siding and leave it in the bay. Here again I can use the electromagnetic uncoupler. Now that it has picked up the empty coal wagon, the engine can be signalled across to the Treverin Porth line. Where it can then back down to reform the train. It then gets the nod to leave on its last leg of the journey. So there you have it. The cattle wagon is at the dock, waiting for the cows to arrive. There is a wagon in the goods shed, ready to be unloaded. And likewise, a van at Caswell's feed store. The coal wagon is there, waiting for Mr. Mitchell to come and unload it. And the flat wagon also, waiting for something heavy to be loaded onto it with the aid of the crane. And the China clay wagons will be picked up by the next service down to Tarn Bay. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope to take you along soon on another X-worthy journey.